Good morning. Okay. Good evening to all of you. Good evening. Welcome to our class. Uh, I wanted to share some question with you. Hmm. It seems I can't share on the Zoom. So let me share some question on the WhatsApp group. The last time we met, what were you discussing? Did you discuss on factory? Someone can remind me? Yes, we did. Are we discussing on factory? Yes. Okay, have a question, one or two? Let me check. One. One question of factory. Yes, one. Okay, okay. Yeah. So if there's one question, let me share with you an extra question here. Okay. Okay, so let me share with you a question here. So I'm sharing on those up group. So check those up. There's a question there that we can attempt together, then we can call it a day on. Oh, refused. Open in here. Yes, I've sent the question on those up group. Okay, let's check it out. Uh, we attempt the first question. We attempt the first question. So go through it, then we attempt it together on Oscar, uh, Oscar Company. Question one Oscar Company. Question one on Oscar Company. So go through it, we attempt it together. Okay, I suppose that you have gone through the question and you have understood what the examiner requires of you. Now, in this question, the company has two alternatives, either take option one or to take option two. So you mean to make an evaluation. Uh, we, each of these two options is gained worthwhile uh, for the company and cost based on the cost benefit analysis. Okay, qualifying. What will be the cost you incurring in case you accept the policy? And what will be the benefits you'll be incurring in case you have to accept the proposed policy? Okay. <clears throat> so option one. Okay, let's read together. Option one, the company is going to hire a factor 
and this factor is going to charge the company a fee of 0.5 percent of the credit sales and uh, they'll be saving in, in the terms of admin cost that's a benefit company the number of days would be 30 okay and currently how many days does the company has not so sure however we've been told the current investment in the receivable is equal to 5.35 million don't forget in this uh, option one is a full recourse basis that imply therefore any bad debt the company will be the one to bear that bad debt not the uh, factor so the company continue bearing the bad debt expense okay there's no mention at option one whether the bad debt will increase or decrease so we assume they remain as they were so the company does not benefit at all in terms of a reduction in the in the bad debt expense okay so we can work it out so let me share my board <clears throat> and i hope you have done something for those few minutes or at least have an idea of what we ought to be doing okay let me open my question Don't forget, the question is on those up, just in case you came late. So, <clears throat> factor fee, so I think we can be there. Uh, that can be our first working uh, factor fee. The fee appeared to the factor of option one is 0.5% of the credit sale. There is no mention as to whether the credit sales will increase or decrease. So the assumption is that they remain constant at 28 million. Mm, a minute. It is 0.5% of credit sales. And we told that the company has a total revenue of 28 million. And out of the 28 million, and out of the 28 million, mm, not all of them are credit sales. Not all of them are, are, are credit sales. Ms. Customer. But it's two percent. No, all sales. Okay, the company has eleven to twenty million, and all sales are on thirty days credit. Ah, okay, all of them they are on thirty day credit. Hmm. This is not the question I wanted to give you. Anyway, we do it together because I've already really given. There's another better question that is similar to this one. Anyway, so the fee of the company is be zero point four percent of twenty eight million. To give us a much. What would be the fee? <coughs> How much, how much do you get? Uh, for 0 0.14 million. 0 0.14 million, 140,000. Okay, we get 140,000 to be the factor fee. Okay, uh, that's for option one. The number of days will be 30. So I think from there you can calculate, we tell you there from. Is there going to be any change to the company uh, receivable investment uh, by uh, the day given there? I think the day for next working can be on the receivable investment. So current position is therefore is already given to us. The company average to receivable currently is equal to 5.37 million. Okay, proposal, the number of days will reduce to number of days reduced to mm -hmm, 30. 30 out of how many days in a year? The disk drive we multiply by credit sales. As I mentioned, there is no mention on whether there will be changes in the company sales, so we assume they remain constant at 28 million. Do you have how much to be the company investment in their customer in terms of credit sales? It gives us uh, 2.33 million, 2 million 333. Yeah, that's yes, that's 333 again. Yes. So 2 million 333, we count that for the company investment, the receivable. 
not sure the sound so someone who seems to be talking but your voice is breaking on my end i'm getting to 301 you get how much i'm having a difference in the 333s three, three, three. i'm okay you're getting what you're getting me yes i am i am okay i'm getting 2.3 Two zero million. one. Yeah, three zero one. Wow, in what? Three me two million. Three hundred and one thousand. One thousand. Mm -hmm. Three hundred and sixty nine. Three sixty nine. Okay. Someone to confirm those two answers, which is which? The second one is correct. The second one. Yes. Is yes. The second one. Sorry, the second one is correct. Oh, okay. 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 I used 360 days, sorry. Okay. okay. In this case, the examiner is giving us the number of days to use. Okay, it's five days. Okay. So we compare the investment before and the investment after. As you can see, the company investment is decreasing from uh, 3 million, uh, from 5.37 million to uh, 2.3 million. Immaculate, ask. Immaculate. Uh, a question. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? A question. On mm -hmm. the fact of fee, why mm -hmm. are we doing 0 0.5 percent of 28 million mm -hmm. and not a uh, not of the credit sales? Mm -hmm. Because in option I one, thought, sorry, sorry, market continue. It's Lord? okay, go on, go on. Okay, the, the factor would charge a fee of 0 0.4 percent of credit sales. Revenue per year. So the fee is based on the revenue. What is the question? Are you marking it? Because they said credit sales, uh -huh. but 28 million is not credit sales, it's the total sales. And if you look at that, that, that first statement, if the second paragraph, or well, first paragraph, more or less, the company has a revenue of 28 million, and all sales are on 30 days credit. Can you see that? So does that mean that all sales are on, cre are on credit? Yes, this, all sales are on credit, as per what is given here. Mm. Because saying, okay. And all sales are on 30 days credit. So all sales are on credit. Mm. OK, I thought it in another way. OK, no, no, the, 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 I don't think there's any trick there. Because, because you've been told that all sales are on credit. So we take it up like that way. All right. Okay, thank you. It's okay, thank you. Okay. Now you can see that for the company investment in the receivable it is decreasing from 5.37 million to 2.3 million. So they have a decrease, 5.37 million minus 2 million, 301,369. We multiply, the person who finances the company, charges the company a fee of 7% by year. You can see all the company pay interest on overdraft a rate of 7% per year. So the company pays a fee, okay? And the bank is one finance the company at a fee of 7% per year. Then how much do you save? How much interest cost do you save there for? Um, I'm getting, um, mm -hmm. okay, it's time. I'm getting 214,814. 814,804. 834. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. 804. We can begin with savings, okay? Of course, we can first begin by finance cost saving. Okay, which we have just obtained here to 14, 8 or 4. Then we have admin cost saving. I think you'll be told admin cost saving. Yes, there'll be admin cost saving. Which we told per year is equal to 30,000. 30,000. 
Okay, we less the cost factor fee. And factor fee, the fee we got is 140,000. Therefore, we have a net saving of how much? There's someone who won't say the answer, but your voice is breaking. Thousand. Sorry, how much? One hundred and four. Eight hundred and four. Eight hundred and four. That way. Yes. Okay, so we get one four thousand eight hundred four dollars with the company net saving if they were to implement uh, this option. Okay, now that's that's option one. Okay, we'll sit for it. Okay, don't this. I have a I have yes. a question. Yes, yes. Uh, please, can you tell me where the seven percent which you multiplied on the finance cost saving came from? If you look at the last sentence. Uh, on the question, okay, you be told that all the company, you can see just before the required, all the company pay interest on its overdrafts at a rate of 7% per year. Can you see that? Oh, I've seen it, sorry, I had okay. missed it. Okay, okay, okay. That's option one, okay? Let's do option two now, therefore. Option two. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes. I'm having a different answer by, by slightly different. I don't know if I'm not getting this. The savings are they okay? I have one. What the are the savings? savings? The, the way they are here, or what? Yes, two, okay, maybe my, let me show you. 214, eight of, is it 804? Yes, it's 804, from what you guys gave me, 804. Yeah, plus 3,600. Plus 30,000. Yes, thirty thousand six hundred. Yes, plus thirty thousand. Minus one forty. I'm having one. Yes, it's thirty thousand. Yes. yes, it's thirty thousand. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Sorry, sorry. I saw thirty six. Okay, okay. Now, in option two, okay, uh, at option two, we've been told that this is what we call uh, the non-recourse basis. Okay, in the first line. Administration by the factor of was a company invoicing sales accounting and the receivable collection on a non recourse basis. Okay, don't forget what that implies. It implies, therefore, that the factor is one who is going to be absorbing uh, the risk of the bad debt. Okay, therefore, the company will be saving okay, any bad debt that is going to be arising out of the sale they make on credit. Okay, that's going to be first working, therefore. Okay, the bad debt. Don't forget, as a company, you save that bad debt, okay? Before, you used to incur bad debt, but after, in your books, you'll be having zero. Because it's a factor now who bears that bad debt expense, okay? They have bad debt, okay? In the second paragraph, all the company have received receivable at current rate equal to 5.37 million, and bad debt are 2% of credit sales. 2% of credit sale. Their bad debt is 2% of credit sale. So you multiply by 28 million to give us how much 560 the bad the company current bad debt examined two percent of 28 million 560 560 and you get be the company bad debt expense but don't forget going forward the factor is one who, who is meant to bear this this expense okay not the company the other company saves on the entire 560 in the saving to the company. Well, this is a non recourse basis. Okay. The factor will charge a fee of 1.5%. Therefore, we have next work here is factor fee. So the factor will charge a fee of 1.5%. We multiply by the fee is based on credit sales. Okay. We multiply by 28 million. Thank you so much. For 20,000. And you get for 20,000 to be the factor fee, the amount the company pays for the, to the factor. Admin cost saving and the trade is collection period would be as option one. Therefore, admin cost saving would be that thousand, okay? 
the finance cost saving will be also equal to to fourteen thousand. If the days remain the same, then for the saving, it also remain the same. Okay, that is also an option two. Okay, so we don't need to work it out because already we have done the working. Okay. Also, company would require to accept would be required to accept an, an advance of eighty percent of credit sales when invoices are raised at an interest of nine percent per year. Therefore, next is going to be the in quotes advance fee. But don't forget this is simply the incremental. That's why I've put it in quotes. And the fee you pay, the amount to be advanced, okay, first is 80%. So you don't get the entire 100% of the sale you make. You only get 80%. On an average basis, how much is the advance to you? Is 80% of the receivable. Okay, the 80% of the receivable, which is where is it? The device receivable. So you're going to be getting 80% of this receivable. Okay, 80% of the receivable. Don't forget. As I mentioned, a receivable is a sale that is has been made by a company but is outstanding, or simply the average sales the company has made within the year. Okay, this will refer to us the receivable. Okay. If we multiply by the receivable, two million three or one thousand three six nine. Three six nine. Okay. They are charging a fee of nine percent. So nine percent. But don't forget before the factor finance account finance you. Already the bank is financing it, was financing you. Okay. Simply therefore, the factor is replacing the bank. So the bank is charging you a fee of 10%. Therefore, what's the incremental cost? We subtract the amount used to be charged by the bank, which is nine, which is seven percent. Therefore, simply the extra cost to you is a two percent. How much therefore, how much was the incremental amount you pay to uh, the factor for financing us? Uh, you've said we are subtracting the 9% uh, and 7%, right? Uh, what is happening is that we want to get the incremental amount you pay to the factor for advancing new money. Before the factor came over, you used to pay 7%. After the factor finances you, they're going to be charging you 9%. There was your extra cost is simply 2%, which is equal to minus 7%. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That is six thousand eight hundred and twenty-two. That's six thousand eight hundred and twenty-two. We come for the incremental cost. Someone have a question? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's mm. yes. I have a question on the advance fee. I just mm -hmm. don't understand why we are taking the eighty percent times uh, the two point three. I thought that it's supposed to be eighty percent times uh, the twenty-eight million. Okay, now, uh, if we do as you're proposing, that is 80% of 28 million, now what it means is that the factor is going to give you 80% times 28 million, which, for example, just a rough figure, the factor is going to give you, like that, for example, 24 million. However, this sale of 28 million, does it occur in the month of January or is it distributed evenly throughout the year? Oh yeah, it's an annual. It's an annual figure. It's an annual fee is an annual figure, isn't it? It's an annual figure. So therefore, the yes. is not going to give you twenty-eight million. In short, it's going to give you in portions. That in case in order of January make a sale of a million, they give you our eighty percent of their million in the month of all until the month of uh, December. So it's going to be in portion wise. So you need to tell me therefore on average basis how much money does the factor give you? It is simply what the factor as the receivable. Okay, thank you yeah. very much. That's why you okay. don't apply by credit sales, you must apply by the receivable. Okay. Okay, yeah. And there was someone else with a question. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether that was Margaret or that was Lillian. That was well, Lillian. Uh, also... Yes, Margaret. I'm I'm a bit confused about the without recourse. Yeah. I thought yeah. could you please explain again? Because I also don't understand why we're including it. If it's a without a non recourse basis, the key difference between the recourse basis and without recourse or the non recourse basis is simply where the company 
took the insurance cover, insurance cover in court, against the bad debt. If the company opted to take a cover, insurance cover in court, against any of its bad debts, then that arrangement is referred to as non recourse. If the company opted not to take the cover, then, like we had in option one, we refer to it as, as a full recourse basis. That's the key distinction. So, we see the terms that are being used to refer to uh, whether it's a cover against a budget or not. So, if mm. if the company has a cover, they mm. don't incur bad debt. Yes, like for example, in this example, in this option two, uh, the company bad debt expense before was equal to five sixty, isn't it? Once they yes. take option two, is upon the factor to bear that five sixty, not the company, but the factor who is well, who is going to continue, who is going to bear that bad uh, of five sixty thousand. To the company is a saving, okay? So okay, this is a bad debt saving, okay? Just to be very explicit, is a saving to the company. To the factor is an expense. <clears throat> to the company is a saving. Oh, so in this case, you're saving it. Oh, okay. okay. It, yes, the type of 60, we got a saving to the company. All right, now I understand. Thank you. Okay. And I think that's the end of our working for option two. Yeah, that is it. Okay. Sorry, just one last thing. Mm -hmm. The interest is like annual interest, it's per annum. Yes, it's per annum. It's, it's, it's per annum. Yes. So that doesn't count. We use the the annual discount. I mean the rate. Because uh, I don't, I seem to get you. Maybe let me just try to see whether I understand what you mean. That this here, the two point three million. Is yes. Average receivable, or rather, it is a receivable. The company or in this, the sale of study the company has made uh, at any point in time. So don't forget, this is also annual. Ah, okay. And this is also annual. That's uh, that's why they, 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 they have the same time period. This is the annual receivable balance. This is the annual interest rate. Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Michael, you have some question? Yes, sir. Ask. You are saying the for calculations for option two is finished, but I think we need to now that the factor is catering for eighty percent of our receivable. So the twenty percent we still need to take from the bank. Uh huh. Which we did here. If you checked out here, let me just take you back. Yeah. So you say that the saving, the finance cost saving, remain the same, isn't it? No, okay, the bank continues charging you. The, the bank continues financing you at seven percent. Uh, this is working you have done at option one. This was done at option one, so I don't want to repeat the working again. But it still continues yeah. percent. It still continues paying seven percent. Okay. So you 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 be paying. Don't forget, this is the what required. This is the finance required. Eighty percent of it comes from the factor. Twenty is a bank financing the same percent. So you still continue bearing that cost. But it, we don't need to calculate it because you used to pay for it even before. So it's, 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 there's no, there's no, in, in, it, there's not, it, there's no incremental cost. Okay. Because even before the fund came over, they used to pay you seven percent. That's why I have not done the calculation for it. Okay. Is it is it clear? Yes. 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 Okay. 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 Okay, having done that, let me just maybe let me just illustrate what Mike is trying to ask because I know some of you can be confused. Now, in the old policy, okay, this is working that we don't we, we don't need to, to read, but just to illustrate, in the old policy, it's called old policy. The amount of capital required was the, this amount of capital required, five point three seven million. Five point three seven million is the amount is required. You go to the bank and borrow ten percent. Now, in the new policy, let me call the proposal, the amount of capital required is equal to 2 million. This is what required. No way is it? So, this, this is what required 2 million, 301, 301, 369. That's the capital required. The factor gives you 8% of it. The bank finances you the 20%. Okay? Now, in the old policy, what was, what was your cost? Let's do a calculation. You don't need to read, but just for own understanding. But you don't make me don't make mistakes in future. Oh, 
um, zero. We are doing the five point uh, five point seven times seven percent, right? The current policy, yes. Yeah, zero point three seven five nine. In what? Well, in okay. So mm -hmm. three hundred minutes. Yeah, I'm right. Just a minute. Just multiply by medium. The figure you have. Three seven five nine hundred. That is 5,900 is the amount you pay to the bank. Don't forget. Now, the fact that they finance you 80%, they charge you 9%. Don't forget, they charge you 9%. Therefore, multiply by 9%. The bank will give you the balance 20%. They charge you 7%. So, what do you get here? The amount you pay to the factor, this 80%. Be careful because the factor is you 9% of the 80% is given you. So how much fee do you pay? You will pay 165,699. 165,699. Now the bank gives the balance 20%. And how much do you pay to the bank? Don't get the bank to continue to charge you 7%. Yeah, it's the Thirty-two to nineteen. Thirty-two to nineteen. Yes. Okay. There's a few pay. Now combine wise. No, this is now after the cost. After how much do you pay? Combine for the two financiers, the factor and the bank. How much fee do you pay? Total finance. One. <clears throat> Sorry. How much? One ninety-seven nine eighteen. One eight seven nine eighteen. That's a few paid to the to those two, two financiers, the factor and the bank. Now, don't forget, this is what you used to pay before. This is what you used to pay before. This is what you'll be incurring after. Now, how much do you save per year? It's simply the difference, which is equal to three seventy five nine hundred minus one ninety seven nine eighteen. How much do you save per year? Therefore, one seventy seven. Nine eight two. Nine eight two. Nine eight two. That is how much the fee will be paid. Okay, that you'll be saving. The amount will be saving per year, which is equivalent to the fee you pay to the factor. The fee you pay to the factor. You have seen that this is the fee you pay to the factor. Okay, compare that with the finance cost saving. Pay finance cost saving. Compare that with finance cost saving. Oh, this is a saving. Okay, therefore it is equivalent to two fourteen eight four. So. Mm, 214.804, you're saving, minus the fee you pay to the factor, 36.822. What do you get? 177.982. Uh, 987, 982. 982. You can see the series two are the same. Whatever method you prefer to follow, you get the same answer at the end of the day, okay? So whether you want to show the, the finance you get from the 20% for the bank, whatever method you want to follow, there's no problem, okay? But as I mentioned, I don't prefer to use this, but whatever you want to follow, no problem at all, you get the same answer, okay? Anyway, so that's on the workings, so you're done on the workings, okay? <clears throat> okay, so solution models, okay? You can see, you can be in savings, we have a demand cost saving, which will be told to remain the same, like in option one, 30,000. There was finance cost saving because the, work, uh, the investment or the borrowing is decreasing. Finance cost saving, which will be equal to, how much was it? What, 214, 804. Then we have another saving, bad debt. Bad debt decrease or saving, to what I want to call it, was 560,000. Do we have seven? Uh, factor for, uh, and this is it. Yes. Okay, cost. Factor fee. We pay for 20,000. Then you have advance fee. No, advance is quote, don't forget. Well, this is an incremental. Advance fee, we are paying that six. 
that is it let's save in when you raise a company on what option so this should take either option one or option two what do you get your next saving there for Three forty-seven nine nine eighty-two. Three forty-seven nine eighty-two. Therefore, what options become a tick? Option one, option two. Option two. The company should uh, take up option two. Uh, to manage its account receivable since it yields the highest annual net saving of 347,982. Okay, don't forget to always advise the company. Always advise the company. The company should finance using, uh, uh, should take up option two since it yields the highest annual net saving of 347,982. Clear. Okay, I suppose that it is clear to all of you. Okay. So most of the time, the exam is going, most of the time, the exam is going to ask you a question, uh, a question regarding working capital will more often than come from how to manage account receivable. Will more often than not come from how to manage account receivable. So uh, ensure that you can go to do any question because I want to mark the end of that subtopic. We discuss now on how to manage cash. Because that's the next thing I want us to discuss. How do we manage cash? Cash management. Let's see if I can get it. Yes, Joseph. I'm requesting you to kindly scroll back to uh, the last working before we move on. The last working, okay, here, let me share. Where is this? Yeah, it's here, where, where is that last working? Okay, the first, this one here. Sorry? Uh, this one. Uh, you, okay, you, you have a question here on these workings. Uh, not really. There was a there's a value I didn't report. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I get it. Okay. Tell me once you're done. I am. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So the next subtopic. Don't forget you're still at a working capital. Money. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Here we use the finance cost saving the same on the same for option two as for option one right yes. but the because the interest rate increased are you supposed to compute another finance cost saving the interest rate increased how will that be a saving so no. oh are you supposed to why are we using the same value mm -hmm. yet the interest rate is not the same like because they had in the option one it was seven percent and now it's nine percent. Why are we still using the same finance cost saving? It's supposed to decrease, sorry, not increase. Yes, it will increase. And here we this is what we have here. The finance cost you're paying. The extra finance cost you're paying. Because here you're paying nine percent. Okay. Because don't forget, before in option one, we didn't have to pay this advance fee. Don't forget, advance fee is simply is a finance cost, by the way. It's a finance cost. The factor is, the factor is giving you 80% of 2.3 million, charging you 9%. So you're paying a fee. So you're simply comparing what fee you used to pay before. That's where we subtract 9%. Or simply, put it another way, this is the fee you'll be paying to the factor for getting the money, which I think you're running this particular other alternative. They are charging 9%. So you're paying a fee for sure. Only that now the savings are more than the fee you're paying. Okay. Okay, okay. I was clear. If not clear, uh, don't hesitate to ask. 
it's clear. It's clear. Okay. Yes. Okay. Immaculate. Uh, one more thing. Uh -huh. In option one. Option one. We didn't, yes, we didn't include the uh the debt the bad debt fee. Yes, we didn't include because in option one it's a full recourse. It is not without recourse. It's a full recourse. So the company bears the bad debt. So there's no saving. Oh, and, and and even in the in the first scenario, in the yeah, it incurred the same bad debt, so there was no change. There was no change there because they have not we have not been told about any decrease or increase in the bad debt. We assume it remains as it was before. Yes. All right, Sawa. Thank you. Okay, cash management, okay, is our next area. Now, cash management, this, this is just like uh, the same same principles in quote you've been following uh, when managing uh, in inventory, managing receivable, managing payable. Same applies here, but don't forget, this is an investment, you know, it's a part of working capital. It's an investment you do make as a company uh, to your customer. And in private, therefore, you need to manage cash. Why do you need to manage cash? You want to ensure that you don't have more cash than what you need. You don't have a core excessive cash liquidity. At the same time, you want to ensure that you don't have a case where that the amount uh, you, do, you don't have enough cash to an extent that in case we have uh, a deal, we do have an obligation that is due. You are paying for your employees. You have to pay for your suppliers. You want to ensure you have, don't have cash deficiency. Okay that you can be able to pay for the obligations as and when they fall to you, okay? So in cash management, you want to, in quote, be able to determine what is therefore my optimal cash balance? What should be the amount of cash I ought to be having, okay? Ensuring that this optimal cash balance minimizes the risk of insolvency, the risk of being liquid as a company, and the risk of not earning profit uh, on your invest on the cash, okay? So you want to strike a balance. Don't have more cash than we need, at the same time, you don't have cash deficiency. Okay, that is the objective of a team and a cash management. Now, the question is that why in cash? Okay, I think you may have discussed this in economics. Okay, for three million reasons. Okay, to take care of the transaction, that to pay for the obligations, as you know, the for due. Uh, we have employees, we need to be paid at the end of the month. Do you have cash flow for that? You need to get the cash flow for that, so definitely. Okay, uh, you have suppliers. Okay, invoice due uh, in the next three days. Okay, can you, have, can you be able to pay for it? Do you have enough cash to be able to pay for those, uh, for, uh, those transactions that are maturing? Okay, the other reason for having cash is for the fact was the precautionary motive. Okay, precautionary motive. In the precautionary motive, you want to caution in court. I think let me suggest you, okay, again, it's in, in unforeseen uncertainty. Okay, you can plan that in the next one month we shall be acquiring uh, one million. What if the need is giving more than one million? If the need is giving 1.2 million, do you have a place where you can go to obtain 0.2 million? You could, okay? So you may need to have more cash than what you need just to take, to caution against any unforeseen uh, uh, extra demand of cash, okay? And then of course, the last motive is called the speculative motive. In this case, you're gonna be using cash as as a speculative asset. Okay, to take advantage of market opportunities. Okay, uh, central bank want to issue tre treasury bills. Okay, and these bills are very good in terms of giving returns. Now, the only person who can invest in those bills is one who have cash. So, the company may want to keep some cash reserves. Okay, to take care of those market uh, opportunities. Okay, uh, there are some bonds that uh, uh, maybe a uh, person want to issue. Okay, government want to issue. Now, the only person who can invest in them is one who have cash. Okay. So you're going to keep some extra cash to take advantage of those favorable market opportunities that are going to be presented to the person who have cash. Okay, so that's the really main reason of holding cash. Okay, I think you may have discussed under economics. Okay. Anyway, as I mentioned at the beginning, is that you want to determine the optimal cash balance. Okay, uh, the optimal cash you want to be having. But there's a tool that you can use the company, okay, uh, which can be used as part and parcel, part and parcel of cash management, what we refer to as, as a cash flow focus, okay, or cash budget, okay, cash focus or cash budget, okay, which is a tool you can use the company in planning. It's, it's more of a planning tool, okay, 
plan in advance that in the next one month, in the next two months, next three months, this is amount of cash that we shall be making from our business, and this is where how we give, we shall be consuming that cash. Okay, so it's more of a cash, is a planning instrument. Okay, is a financial planning uh, instrument. Okay, where in the case of a cash flow forecast, you do is that you can be quantifying uh, in the next few months. Okay, what is going the cash uh, we shall be earning from the different operations. Okay, whether from revenue uh, operations or whether from capital operations. Okay. So you want to determine, you quantify, okay, the cash inflows the company shall be making in the next few months. At the same time, you quantify the cash outflows, okay, money out of the business in the next few months, okay. So it's simply trying to, uh, to show, okay, or to plan, okay, on the company cash needs or the company uh, ex cash they may be generating. If, for example, uh, as you prepare this forecast, okay, maybe in the month, second, in the month of February, okay, you foresee there will be more cash outflow than inflow, okay, from the forecast, okay, that in the second month of the year, you're going to be using more cash than what you'll be earning that month. Now you plan ahead. Don't forget, you can't pay, uh, uh, you can't make payments, okay, if you don't have money. So in case you can foresee that in the second month of February, okay, the need for cash is more than what you're able to generate, then of course you plan how where do we get money okay, to take uh, to to, to uh, take care of that deficiency. Okay, so you can for example uh, go to the bank in advance. Okay, you tell the bank I would want to enter into an overdraft financing arrangement. Okay, that there'll be months when I want to be having cash. Okay, in those months I can overdraw my account. Okay, so it's more of a cash planning tool. But the idea is that when it comes to preparing the focus, okay, we don't need to make a distinction on where the money is from uh, a revenue source or a capital source. Okay, all the key difference, revenue and capital. Revenue, don't forget this is money you'll be earning or paying for the normal cost, possibly within the normal business operation. Paying for your employees, paying for your raw materials, uh, money received from sale of uh, sale of uh, your inventory, sale of your merchandise, how you provide. That's cash received from the normal cost of normal business operations. Then you have cash, let me call it in quote, uh, from the extraordinary. Okay, things that don't happen every day. Okay, uh, you don't buy a car every day. Okay, uh, your Facebook, you don't buy uh, Instagram every day. Okay. So you have company, they may be having those cash expenditures, okay, or even cash generation, okay, that happened once in a while, okay, we'll call capital expenditures, okay. You don't buy a motor vehicle every day, okay. So when preparing the focus, we don't make that distinction. If the money is in the business, whether it came from a revenue source or a capital source, we quantify it. If the cash inflow came from loans by the bank is a cash inflow. Couldn't fight when received that loan. If the cash is received from the sale of the company previous motor vehicle, it is still money in the business. So couldn't fight when it is received. Okay. That's killing. You don't make a decision where the money came from capital source or from a revenue source. At the same time, be very careful in preparing the forecast. Okay. Because out of the forecast, okay, is more about the timing. Okay. The time is of concern, okay? When do you pay? That's when you're going to be able to make the recognition in the forecast. Not when you incur, it's when you pay. If it's about the money to be earned, it's not when you earn it, it's when you actually receive that money. You provide a service in the month of December, you get paid in the month of January. You make a recognition not in the month of December, but in the month of January, when the cash is to be received. Okay, that's a key concern. You have to be careful when preparing the cash for focus. And generally, the focus may appear in such a way. Okay, you could file all the cash inflows. Okay, like here I've mentioned the cash receipts or simply cash inflows. Okay, and all the cash outflows. Okay, you could find them. Okay, all the inflows you'll be incurring the first month of January, month of February, month of March. Okay, all the achieved last month. Okay. As you can see, this is a revenue in nature because it's coming from the company, no operation, okay? Issue shares, no, this is capital because we don't issue shares every day, okay? So this is capital. As I mentioned, we don't make a distinction whether the money is from a revenue source or from a capital source, okay? The same applies here. This is revenue, this is capital. You don't pay tax every day, okay? You don't buy a motor vehicle every day, 
okay? But either way, we don't make a distinction as to where the money is from cash source or from a revenue source, okay? Then of course, the total cash inflow, okay? What are we doing the balance here, okay? We less the cash inflow, okay, for the month. So the inflows minus the outflows will give, therefore, the net cash balance for the month. Then you may have cash at the beginning of the month, so plus the cash beginning, and you get the cash carried down. The cash carried down for the month of January is the brought forward in the month of February. The cash carried down in the month of February is the cash brought forward month of March. Simple as that. And that's how you prepare a cash flow forecast. Here. Yes. Okay. Now let's prepare a focus. The examiner has asked this question in the past. Give me one second. I look for the question. Okay. I presuppose that you're going for the question. Have you seen what the examiner was expecting for the student who sat for that paper? So let's attempt together. We want to get the cash budget or prepare the cash budget for three months ending in December. Okay, so the three months that ends in December. Okay, <clears throat> so then we call this is October, November, December. Okay, so and being by getting cash inflows. Okay, so cash inflows. Sales, uh, sale will be made on credit. Half of the debtors are expected to pay uh, within the month of sale. So half pay within the month of sale. So then begin here, month of October, 10 to the October. So half the customer, in the month of October, the sales is 60 million. And half of those pay in the month of October. So half of them, for 50%. Okay, so that's the cash seed. Now getting the focus we are going to be using, we are preparing uh, based on uh, the uh, focus, we are based on cash basis, okay? The remaining and are expected to claim, oh, they are going to be receiving 2% discount. Oh, that's money of loss. So 2% discount. So it's half, but 2% discount. You will only be getting 98% of it. Clear? Okay. Then the remaining debtors are expected to pay by the beginning of the following month. So the, the other balance in the month of the other balance or the, the other half pay in the uh, month of November. Therefore, 60 times half. The other half pay the following month. Okay. So in the month of September, half paid in September, the other half paid in October. Therefore, the other half of September they received in October. There was 60 million times a half. In the month of November, we made a sale of 70, we receive half of it, so plus 20 million, we receive half of it, and we give the discount, which in this case is 98% discount. Then in the month of December, the sale is 90. Don't forget, the sale is made in the month of October, half is received the following month. And half is 20 million is half of 20 million. Then in the month of December, you make a sale of 90, you receive half, and the other half you receive in the month of January the following year. So you receive half of it. So 90 million, we receive half of it, but don't forget you gave the 2% discount. So times 98%. Is that clear? Okay. So cash receipts, there's cash from sale. October, how much do you get? Oh, 9.4. Uh, so you get how much? October, October you get 59.4. Uh, 59.4? 59, 59. Uh, give me in thousands. Oh, you get fifty nine million four hundred thousand. 
59 million 400,000 Kendi okay uh, why are we starting from October and not September and you have sales for September because the exam is quite nice to if you check on the required a cash budget for three months ending December so working back on December oh. November October so even on our cash budget, you're not supposed to indicate the September, even if we don't, we are not. You can, it. but there's no marks for it. Okay. Yeah, so you, you'd rather not indicate it. All right. Okay. Okay, so November, what did you get? 64 million, 300,000. 4 million, 300,000. December? Twenty nine million one hundred thousand. So it's nine million. One hundred thousand. One hundred thousand can kind of for the cash to be received from sales. Okay, so we're done with the sale. Okay. Then in note note five, we will check out additional information. Note five on first October the plan the uh, that try to whether is in a car the cash inflow. Plan for delivery. That's cash bus. Uh, cash tent. Hmm. There seem to be no other cash inflow. Okay. Cash outflow. You don't see to the have any other cash inflow. So since there's no any other cash outflow inflow, we go to the cash outflows. Okay. <clears> or <throat> material purchase September October given there. The farm plans to pay its creditor in full in the month following that of purchase. Okay. So therefore, in case we make purchase in the month of September, when do we for it? In October. In October, okay. If we pay it in October, therefore, this is raw material, payment for raw material. The rate for raw material, uh, September, we made a purchase of 20, paid the following month. Therefore, we pay 20 here. Cash out flow, so the negative. Then in, October, we purchased 20 paid the following month. November, the payment is made the following month. The main is 40. Okay, that's for material. Hope it's all clear. Next is wages. In note one, all employees are paid in the month in which the wage or the salary is earned. So it's paid the same month. In October, the wages is made with 15 million, so pay the same month. Okay, therefore, mm -hmm. that's as they are 15 million. November 17 million. Uh, December 13 million. Clear. Yeah. Okay, that's for wages. Then in note two. A rent of 10 million for each quarter is paid in March, in June, September, and December. So in December, we are paid for rent. That is the month of December, and the rent we are paid for is equal to 10 million. 10 million. Cash out for. Okay, that's note two. Note three, other cash overheads of 2 million per month are payable. Okay, so every month you pay for overheads. You're paying every month, so two million. Cash out flow. Okay, that's note three. Note four, a new plant due for delivery in September will be paid in November at cost. So you're paying it for uh, in the month of uh, November. So here you have a plant, and you're paying for it in the month of November for a cost of 25 million. And that is it. Okay. So info manager minus alpha, you are there for the cash cash for the month. Or net cash, it's called net cash balance. Net cash balance for the month.
Have a question. Okay. Uh -huh. On the on the raw material for October. Raw material for October, yes. Yeah, why are we doing it at 20 instead of 40? Both the material, you look at that sentence just below that. The farm plans to pay its creditors in full in the month following that of purchase. Therefore, this material for the month of October are paid for in the month of November, is it? Was it paying the, the following month? Not the same month, following month. Oh, okay, the farm plans to pay its creditors in the month. So, like, like in September. Mm. Okay, I'm not understanding it yet. Like, in the month of September, you made purchase for material, isn't it? Yes. How much? Uh, 20, 20 million. 20 million. Where do you pay for it? Uh, in the following month. Which is the month of? October. October, which is 20. Yes. You get it? So, uh, so the purchase, so what happens is the purchase in, um, in October will remain 20. In October, I don't get you. The purchase in October I'm is not, 40. Sorry? Huh? The purchase in October is still 40. However, it yes. is for the following month. In November. In November, which is still 40. Yes, which is 40. Yes. Yes. And the purchase made in September is paid for in the month of October. Which is twenty, which we have here twenty. Okay, so the amount that we are indicating right now it's the purchase that is going to be paid the following month. Oh, this is cash outflow. Cash outflow. This is cash outflow. Don't forget here we're not using the we're not using the cruel basis. We're using cash basis. It's when you pay. Oh, okay. We are recording when you after the payment. When the payment is either received or when it is either paid for, not when it is incurred. Okay, okay, I get it. We are preparing on cash basis, not across basis. Okay, yeah, I get it now. Okay, thank you. So, what do you get? Month of October, net cash. Net cash. Net cash is 22,400,000. November? Uh, a, loss, a loss of 19,700,000. 19,700,000. Okay, month of yes. December? Uh, 14,100,000. Confirm those figures? Yes, they are correct. Okay. Then you have cash balance brought forward, cash balance brought forward. Don't forget in note five, on 1st October, the, uh, the company plans to have 10 million in the bank. So we have 10 million here already, okay, at the beginning of the month. Yes. And the cash balance carried down, that's two, 400. Now this is for the month of October, becomes the opening balance, month of November. 
Yes. Closing balance of uh, November. Closing balance for November. Mm -hmm. 12? 12.7. 12.7. 12, 12, 12, 12,700. 12,700. Yeah, that's the opening balance next month. Closing balance. 26,800. Yes, 26,800. Yes. Yeah, 26,800, the closing balance the month of December. And that's you prepare a cash for focus. Here. Question? Okay, seems that you did a start and then a start well. Okay. So that's how we prepare a cash flow focus. Seem to be no question. <clears throat> Uh, on the, okay, the money in the bank of 10 can we consider as a cash inflow? Yes, we can consider it as a cash inflow. Yes, we can consider it as a cash inflow. The 10 million we have at the beginning of the month. Yes, is that a cash inflow? Okay. <clears throat> so that's on the cash budget, the cash for focus. Okay. Now, we can also use cash, you can also use models, okay, that can help us in uh in the research fields in getting to, to, to understand okay uh what is the optimal amount of cash by the way before i get the models let's go back to our workings here now here don't forget you have prepared the cash cash for focus okay if for example uh the maximum cash you ought to be having for example uh, all of that. The maximum amount of cash you be sure you ought to be having. You should be having, okay, is let's say 15 million. We can say that in the month of October, okay, you have more cash than what you need. Because you can see the balance here is that's two four hundred. There was a company you can plan ahead, okay. How are you going to invest in the difference? Okay, that's two point four million minus fifteen million. Okay, therefore this is give us twelve point four million. So you can plan ahead in the month of October. We have more cash than we need. We have 12.4 million more than what we need. So you plan in advance, okay? We're going to be, for example, uh, be uh, investing the money, okay? In the month of November, you can see you have cash deficiency, okay? Because you can see this is 12,700. 12, I see that the target is only to have a cash at hand of 15 million. Now you can plan ahead. What do I do in order to ensure that I get the difference, okay? 15 million minus 12.7 million, okay? You look for? the 2.3 million. You plan ahead on how you'll be getting this 23 million. For example, you can enter into agreements okay, with the bank uh, to withdraw 2.3 million, take care of your needs in the month of October. Okay. So cash models. Now in cash models, we need to use two models okay, that can help us in cash management. We have the first is called the use of the bubble model and we have the use of Miller or model. Okay, those are the two cash models that we're going to use. Okay, so the first model, the bubble model, is essentially the EOQ model. Okay, is essentially the EOQ model which you have been discussing so far. Okay, the only difference is that now the cash is one that is being considered like in inventory. Okay, it's simply the EOQ model. The assumption for the EOQ uh, are also applied in the bubble model. Okay, so if we have to consider cash like in inventory. If you remember in the EOQ model, we were discussing on the Q, okay, the optimal size of the inventory. As you make, as you reorder, okay, as you make orders to get uh, supplies from your uh, your supplier, okay, How, what will be the size of the order, okay? The same applies here, okay. Here the idea is that if the company has excess cash at some point in time, uh, you invest that money, okay. If you have excess cash invest that money. If, for example, they have just done in that cash focus in the month of October, when you have 12.4 million more than what you need, invest that excess cash, okay? In the month when, in the month of November, November, for example, when you have cash deficiency, what do you do? You dispose of your previous investment you made uh, from the cash you had, okay? So you attempt as much as possible to invest in the money market instruments, okay? 
don't forget this cash this excess cash you have is only for one month in the month of october in the month of november you have deficiency so you cannot invest in long-term assets so you do invest in short-term uh, maturing assets money market instruments okay so you do invest in those money market instruments in the month of october for example you buy uh treasury, treasury bills of 12.4 million the excess in the month of october the need you have is 2.3 million therefore dispose of your previous investment of 2.3 million okay so if for example okay you're making so the q proposed by the Baumol model don't forget, as I mentioned, the bowel model is a readaptation of the EOQ model. Okay, so if you know the Q of the EOQ, okay, which was the optimal size of the order in this time round, it is the optimal size of the investment. You either going to be buying or selling. If you have excess cash, okay, if you have excess cash, or for example, uh, let me just give an example of 20, not 20, of the 15 million, if in the month of October, okay, I'm referring to the focus we've just done. If in the month of October, uh, our excess cash is 12 million, don't forget here, we got 12.4 million as the excess cash. Don't invest because it's yet to be, if the Q proposed by the model is 15 million, the Q proposed by the model, the bound model is equal to 15 million, don't invest 12.4 million. It is yet to reach the Q proposed by the bubble model. Wait until the excess cash you have reaches the queue proposed by the model, the 15 million. Once excess cash is 15 million, invest now in the marketable securities, in the money market instrument. For example, in treasury bills. So, but wait until it is at Q queue of 15 million. If we have cash deficiency, okay, and the queue remain at 15 million, in the month of October, okay, your cash need is, let's say, uh, 3 million. Don't dispose money market instrument of 3 million. Dispose as a queue of 15 million. You sell your money market instrument equal to 15 million. Okay? The idea is that you want to ensure you reduce the number of transactions, the number of investment you make. Don't forget, every time you make, you be investing in this money market instrument, you need to be incurring costs. Okay, for example, you, can be, you may be using a broker. Okay, to be buying for you the securities, okay, a bank. They don't wait for free, they charge you a fee, okay? So in case of excess cash, you don't need to invest it frequently, okay? Because you'll be incurring more costs for the transaction. At the same time, in case you have cash deficiency, okay? Don't invest three million every, uh, like, like every month. You can dispose three million, okay, as per the queue, reduce the number of uh, disposals in the quote you make uh, through your broker. Reduce the cost, the transaction cost. Okay, and that's on the bottom model. Everything else that remains is simply the UQ model that we have already discussed. So the sanction we had for the UQ applies also in the case of the bound model. Okay, uh, like for example, the annual demand. Okay, you can go predict what is going to be the annual demand of cash in the next one year with certainty. Okay, that in the next one year, this is, what, this is how much we'll be requiring. Okay, or oh, this is going to be the excess cash we shall be generating. So you can go either side, either company, you're able to generate more cash than we need. In other case, invest. If you have cash deficiency, okay, you have the need, you have cash uh, needs, then you'll be disposing of your previous investment. The cost you got per transaction, what we in the EOQ we call the cost, the cost per order, also remain constant. Okay, the cost you will pay to the broker, the transaction cost also remain constant. So that's the cost per order, more or less. Okay. The holding cost of cash. Okay. What is the holding cost of cash, by the way? What is the holding cost of cash? Bank interest. The bank interest. The interest you will earn for investing that money. Okay. Not bank interest, but in the interest. Okay. The interest you're going to earn for investing money. But since you never invest that money, that's why it's a holding cost of cash. You lost that interest. So the interest for God is the holding cost of cash. Therefore, as per the model, the, UK, the bond model, they have the holding cost of cash, the interest shall be known and remain fixed during the period of, of casting. So in the next one year, the interest shall be known. The interest will be earned for investing the money would have, will be known, okay? 
also the cash consumption or the cash generation uh, will be on a constant rate. Okay, so in case month one you earn one, 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 an excess cash of one million, then it will be one million for the entire year. Okay, that's another assumption. So simply is an extension of the EOQ to be to cash together. Clear. Yes, it's clear. Okay, that's good. Don't forget, as I mentioned, the holding cost of cash is simply the interest you don't earn if you have to invest as money market instrument. So you'll be losing that. The cost of the order is the cost of transaction, the amount you'll be paying to the broker for transacting on your behalf. Okay, the broker is free. Okay, the amount you pay to the broker for uh, carrying out your instructions. Okay. To buy those money market instruments or to dispose of those money market instruments. Okay. And the Q proposed by the model, therefore, okay, is equal to simply the UQ model. Okay, Q is equal to the square root of two D cost per order divided by holding cost. And this time out, the cost per order is the brokerage fee, the transaction cost. Holding cost we have mentioned is the interest for gold. That is it. The Q proposed by the model is exactly like the UQ model. There is no difference. Only that cash now is considered like inventory. Okay. Okay, I'll be about, um, someone has a question. Yes, Sharon. Okay, uh, kindly repeat what you said the holding. The holding cost. Yeah, the holding cost cash. Now, if you remember when we're discussing on the inventory, where you say that there's some cost being carried along the way, okay, for having that inventory in the warehouse, the rent you pay, the security fee you pay, uh, the uh, insurance costs you pay. Now all this is yeah. not really bad because now you have cash. But actually, by the way, if you do need to hire security, okay, you're meant to uh, be uh, to be safeguarding your cash, okay, you be have some a guard for that, okay. Uh, that becomes part of part and parcel of the cash holding costs. But essentially, the conventional cost of holding cash is the interest you could have earned. If you have to invest that money, uh -huh. you have cash at hand. So you, you, the cash is being held at hand. However, it wouldn't earn anything. Or cash at hand wouldn't earn any, any interest. Therefore, the return it could have earned, the potential investment return it could earn for the business, become there for the cost of holding that cash. It's simply the opportunity cost of that cash, which is simply the interest it could have earned if you have to invest that money. But since you didn't, you didn't invest, you kept, you, you did uh, hold on to the cash, that's going to fall, a lost opportunity, a lost benefit. Okay, thank you. Okay. So an example.
page of Pantheon bed. Bed is not in class. Sophia. Sophia. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. No. There's someone who can't see my screen. What's happening? From your head, you can see it clearly. Yes. Maybe, maybe you have one who had an issue. Can you see it now? I don't know who had an issue. Can you see it now? Mary, uh, hello. Yes. Hello. hello. I can't see the screen. You can't see the screen. What's happening? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Could it be your, your internet connection or what? I can see the screen. Oh, you can't see it now? Yes. Okay. okay. There was someone else who, uh, who I don't know. Who, uh, there's a gentleman who was saying he can't see the screen. I hope you can see it. I don't know who it was. I can see it now. Okay, I hope you are going through the question. And you have a search for the examiner requires of you. So in this example, a B and we get the open model cash the company to invest in each transaction. So the company uh, seems to yield excess cash. Okay, and every month they are able to yield. Hmm. I'll have to exit the full screen. Oops, I hope you'll be able to see. Okay, so we were told that the company generates 10,000 per month, so per year, we'll call this a 10,000 times 12 to give us 120,000. The cost of transaction is 50, and the company, the cost of not investing, the holding cost of cash is 5% per annum. Therefore, the Q is equal to the square root of 2 times annual demand, 120,000. We multiply by the cost per transaction, $50. Divide by the holding cost, which is 0 0.05 or 5%, and you get Q of how much? Uh, fifteen thousand four hundred and ninety-two. Fifteen thousand four ninety-two dollars be the optimal amount of cash should be invested in. Sure, therefore, when it comes to investing in money market instrument, for example, okay, in certain securities, uh, don't invest at ten thousand. Wait until the excess cash reaches fifteen four ninety-two, then invest. Okay, repeat that for the entire year. Okay. Next question is that how many transactions, how many of the uh, investment do you make? Look, in a year, the excess cash you have is 120,000. Every time you invest, you invest 15, 492. How many investments do you make, roughly? Uh, seven. Mm, to the nearest? To the nearest you get seven. eight, 7.6. So, to the nearest, we get eight transactions. Okay. Candy? 
Okay, the, the, the calculation, the Q is two times uh, 120 or it's 10,000? Mm, I don't guess, Q is. Okay, the, I'm trying to find out the calculation of, okay, I'm seeing two times 120. Where are we getting the 120 from? 120. Oh, 120 which, annual month. Oh, there's oh yeah, annual. annual. They have 10,000 it's monthly. Okay, good. 10,000 is monthly, so convert to annual. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. Next question we ask is to get the cost for the transaction. The cost of making these transactions. Don't get you make eight transactions. You make roughly eight transactions a year. Okay. And the cost per transaction is $50. Therefore, the cost will be equal to 8 times $50. And you pay a fee of $400. Because it's the number of transactions, which is eight, multiplied by the cost per transaction, which is 50. So for that. Okay. Then lastly is, what is the industry be losing for not investing money? Okay. The winning cost of funds may be equal to the amount of money to get, if you remember, it was Q divided by two times the interest foregone. Okay. Which will be equal to Q which is equal to 15, 4, and 2 is what you'll be holding. But don't forget, you need to get an average. So multiply by 2. Times the interest you're going to earn is 5%. The question is how much you have to lose per year. Is that clear? Sir? Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask uh -huh. when you're finding the total transactions per annum, uh -huh. isn't it right not to round off? Because if uh -huh. you say eight, it means uh -huh. that our money cannot make eight transactions because it's 7.7. .7, that means it's a maximum of seven. If it's eight now, that will surpass the amount of money we have. Okay, now the you can say seven, you can say eight. No, which way? Where is it? I, I just want to go to the nearest uh, transaction number. So I went to. If you go with seven, you can still go with seven, but of, you can still go with seven, by the way. But don't forget, at the end of the day, they're going to. Uh, the decimal won't have any impact in reality. Because if you look at. It's only that we want to uh, enclose ourselves in one year. But the business continues to build one year. Look okay, at the 0 0.7, it means that you'll be having. Uh, excess cash in the month of December that you don't invest in December, you invest the following year. So it goes forward to the next year. So it's just for our own two, I don't know what's the best term to, it's you want to have it in one year. That's, that's the term here. But in reality, you won't have a, a same with seven out of a transaction. Do you get it? Okay, okay, thank you. I just choose to get the nearest uh, whole number. That's, 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 that's why. Holy cost of cash, you get three. Three eighty seven point three. Three eight seven point three. Okay, the for the holy cost of cash. Three seven point three. Clear. Okay. I suppose that that's very clear. No. Your exam, of course, he does test, he or she does test from this area quite often. So, I'm trying to look for a question that asks us to apply the model. So, you get it. Because the exam asked this question. Uh, I think I have it. Let me have it done.
So I'm trying to look for a question. I thought I'd seen a number of questions. Hmm. Okay, I can do this. Okay, I can do this. It's from sitting November 2017. November 2017. November 2017, question 5D. November 2017, question 5D. November 2017, question 5D. Attempt it first, attempt it first. Okay, I suppose that you've gone through the question, you have attempted. So what was the optimal size? <clears throat> optimal size, what was that much? 169705. 169705, okay. The frequency of the number of Okay, frequency of the number of transaction. Uh, number of transaction is 71. 71 transactions. Okay. And there's a time to do it together. <coughs> Q, which is given us two annual demand. Now, here called in cost is a transaction cost. I call it CT. We divide by the interest. Q, therefore, is equal to two annual demand or the annual excess cash. On 20. One, 12 million, sorry, 12 million. million Two times 12 million. 12 million times the cost per transaction, which is 60. Coding cost is the interest per year, 0 0.05. And give us 69. Yes. Okay. Then number of transaction is, of course, number of transactions per year is equal to annual demand divided by Q which is 12 million, divided by uh, 169.705.62. And you get how much, roughly, to the nearest? Five. Five. 71. And you get 71 transactions to be the number of transactions per year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can get another question. I think I've heard more than this. Was there a question? Oh, okay, and I see not getting that question. Okay, so not to get another question, but here, so yes, Lorraine. Okay, I have a question. The 12 million are you supposed to divide it by 365 days to get the annual demand? Okay. Divide by 365 I... to get the annual demand. Yeah. Where would you want to divide? Because I think 12 million was the annual demand, wasn't it? 
on how the question is phrased. I think that. Okay, so from the question, you're told that the two. Okay, from the question, the two million during the year, then you are told to assume at the year or not. Yes. But don't forget all this are uh, over here. Yes? So are we supposed Are we supposed to divide by this five? Get the annual demand for because you're breaking, but uh, it's the year. You, you did break, so I can't forget it. But anyway, you want to mean we divide 12 million by the risk five. That's what you mean. Yes. What do you mean? But why would you want to divide? Because don't D is annual demand. And million is annual demand. Why would you want to divide by three five? Well, that's going to give you daily demand of cash. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, this is annual. So you don't need to divide. If you divide, this is annual demand of cash. Great. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Welcome, Lillian. I have a similar question. I was wondering why the examiner gave us the 365 days. I, I don't know why he gave us those days. They don't apply, they don't make sense here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's on the Bamol model. Okay, before I discuss, now we have another model called the Miller or model. I'm not sure they have time to go through it. I think we have. Now, here, one of the key drawback, okay, let me just discuss from this drawback going into that model. One of the key drawback is that here we mean we are assuming, okay, one of the key assumptions you're making, which might be a wrong assumption, is that as a company, wait until the excess car reaches 169. 705. We are assuming that this is what we call a constant, a constant generation of cash within the year. Okay, there will be constant generation of cash during the year, which is not the truth. In the reality is that the company cash, the company cash balance will move up and down, up and down. That's the reality. Okay. Some uh, during the beginning of the month, okay, the cash balance of the company will be low, okay, because they have so many bills they are paying for. Okay. Uh, middle of the month when there is no uh, uh, a lot of bills they are paying for, the cash balance will be up. So the reality is that it's quite unlikely that the cash balance is going to uh, because if we are to project, okay, let, let's just project uh, how the graph will be like. If we don't invest that money, you assume that in the month of January, uh, February, uh, uh, all the way until to the month of December, if we don't invest money, the assumption that in the month of uh, January, for example, okay, in two months we should generate ten thousand. So two months ten thousand. So this ten thousand. If we don't invest, then you still have excess cash. So the next month, what happened? You have another ten thousand. Over the next two months, you have another ten thousand. Okay, so the cash balance goes to twenty. The next two months, you don't invest. The cash balance goes to all the six for all the two hundred. That assumption. So the graph is going to be appear something like this. Okay, so the graph is going to appear something like this. That's how the graph is going to appear like. That's not the reality. The reality is that the cash is going to move up and down. Some point within a the month, there'll be low cash balances, okay? So the reality is that the cash will be like this. Let me just do it. The reality of the cash balance will be like this. It is not going to be like this, okay? So the reality is the cash balance will be up and down, up and down. Some month, some point, uh, time of the month, there'll be a lot of cash, okay? Even from your own perspective, okay? From your own experience, okay? Some part of the month, you'll be having uh, in quote high cash balance. Some other part of the month, you're going to be broke in quote, okay? So that's the reality. Okay, so the assumption to be uh, the assumption of course as generation of cash will not be applied. That's not the reality. It's out of touch with market reality. It's out of touch with uh, the business reality. Okay, 
and as we have therefore this model coming in okay the miller all model okay it comes in and say that the cash balance okay of the company will be more or less something similar to that okay Therefore, what you want to know as a company, what you should establish as a company is limits. Okay, what you want to establish as a company is limits. You need to know, to know what is therefore is your maximum cash you'll be having. What is your mean of cash you'll be having? It's called the lower limit. It's called the maximum cash, also called uh, the upper limit. So what you want to do as a business is to ensure the cash balance doesn't go above the upper limit. They don't go above that. So in case they approach the upper limit, what you do is you need to correct that. Okay. So the cash doesn't go beyond. Okay. And generally, you can have a call a target cash balance. Okay. What you aim your cash balance be at. Okay. So assume that the company target cash balance. Okay. Depending on their expenses, uh, uh, is let's say a fellow limit can be two thousand, for example. Okay, it can be per day. Okay. This this is time. It can be per day, it can be per week. Okay, let me just use days here. Okay, and this is the amounts. So 2,000 is the minimum. The maximum is, for example, 10,000. What you aim to have is, let's say, uh, 4,000 okay, per day. Okay, that's just what you can, the company cash balance should be like. Okay, so you can, if the cash balance in case 10,000, approach 10,000, then you need to reduce it back to the normal. Okay, let me call this uh, the return point or the target cash balance. This is called the return point of the target cash balance so if the cash balance reaches to the upper limit lower you need to reduce it back to the turn point okay you need to reduce it back to the turn point how do you reduce the cash back to turn point how do we reduce the cash we have more cash than what we need well, how do we do that by investing by investing the money, thank you. By investing the money in the money market instruments, what I have just mentioned. By investing that excess cash in the money market instrument, okay? Invest in the money market instruments. If the cash balance uh, reduces, goes to uh, approaches the lower limit, we don't need to ensure that we need to collect that back to the return point. We need to increase the cash balance back to the return point. How do we do that? Taking an overdraft or loan. Mm -hmm. Before you do that, sell the securities. You sell securities. Don't forget this is screen the sale of securities. Okay, sell your money market instrument you already bought in the previous cases. Target here, you, you, you didn't invest. Dispose them. Okay, you need to increase cash balance back to 4,000, for example. Okay, that's how you manage cash. And that's the middle or model. So the reality, of the, the reality is that the company cash balance will be moving up and down, up and down. Okay. So all you need to establish the company is to establish the limits. Okay. Getting know what the, should be the maximum amount of cash we should be having, what should be the minimum amount of cash we should be having. Okay. That is how the company should be managing its cash balances. If the cash balance reaches the upper limit, the maximum, you need to reduce it back to the return point. If the cash balance uh, approaches the lower limit, the mean of cash balances, you need to boost it, you need to increase it back to the target cash balance. That is, in this example, the 4,000. Okay, and that's the Miller or model. Question? Okay, I guess next time we meet, that's where we shall start on the Miller or model.